Welcome to Logic Over Faith. Why does the universe exist? That's one of the oldest and deepest questions humanity has ever asked. It's a question that predates religion, predates science, and sits right at the crossroads of philosophy, cosmology, and the very human need for meaning. And despite centuries of thought, debate, and exploration, we still don't have a final answer. But that doesn't mean we're lost in the dark. In fact, we've come a long way. So in this video, let's explore that question not by jumping to conclusions, but by thinking carefully, logically, and honestly. When someone asks, why does the universe exist? They're often asking a loaded question. Because baked into that word why is the assumption that there has to be a reason, a purpose, a mind behind it all, a grand intention. That's how humans naturally think. We're wired to see intention behind outcomes. If you see footprints in the sand, you assume someone walked there. If your car won't start, you try to find why. We look for causes and reasons in everything. That makes sense for survival, because in our day-to-day -day world effects usually have causes and actions usually have reasons. But when we try to apply that same instinct to the entire universe, we might be asking the wrong kind of question. Let's start with a common response people often give. The universe exists because God created it. On the surface, that seems like an answer. But when you think about it for more than a moment, it actually just pushes the question back a step. If everything needs a reason or a cause, then who or what caused God? Why does God exist? Saying God just exists isn't really different from saying the universe just exists. You've answered one mystery by inventing another one. It's like putting a curtain over a hole in the wall and pretending the hole disappeared. This leads us to something called the brute fact. Some philosophers suggest that maybe the universe is a brute fact, something that just is without further explanation. Not everything needs a deeper cause. For example, try asking, why is 2 plus 2 equal to 4? You can explain it using rules of math, but ultimately those rules are based on definitions and logic that don't need a cause. They're just true. Maybe the universe is like that. It's not satisfying emotionally, but not everything true is emotionally satisfying. Just like death is a fact, even though we wish it weren't. Now let's take a look at what science has to say. When we talk about the universe, we mean space, time, energy, and matter, the whole package. According to modern cosmology, the universe began about 13.8 billion years ago with the Big Bang. That's not just an explosion in space. It was an explosion of space itself. Time as we understand it began then. That means asking, what happened before the Big Bang? Might not even make sense because there was no before. Time itself started with the Big Bang. Imagine asking, what's north of the North Pole? It's a question that falls apart once you understand the shape of the Earth. Similarly asking, what caused the beginning of time? Might be asking something that doesn't have a meaningful answer. Still, science doesn't claim the Big Bang explains everything. It describes how the universe evolved from its earliest moments, but it doesn't yet explain why there was a Big Bang in the first place. But scientists are working on it. There are hypotheses like quantum cosmology that suggest the universe could have spontaneously arisen from a quantum vacuum. In quantum mechanics, things can pop in and out of existence due to fluctuations. We've observed particles doing that in laboratory conditions. So it's not unreasonable to consider that the universe itself could have started from nothing. Though we should be careful because that nothing in physics isn't the same as philosophical nothing. It's more like an unstable state without particles but with laws of physics still present. That leads to an interesting point. If the laws of physics can exist without a physical universe, maybe they're more fundamental than space or time. But why do these laws exist at all? That's a harder question, and one we don't yet have a solid answer to. But again, the lack of an answer doesn't mean we get to plug in a god and call it a day. Let's look at another line of reasoning, the anthropic principle. It says that we can observe the universe only because it allows for observers like us. If the universe were different, if the constants of physics were slightly off, then atoms wouldn't form, stars wouldn't burn, planets wouldn't exist, and life as we know it would be impossible. So we shouldn't be surprised that we're in a universe that allows life, because if it didn't, we wouldn't be here to ask the question in the first place. That might sound like circular reasoning, 
but it's not. It's a selection effect. Think of it like this. If you find yourself in a room with breathable air, you don't need to be surprised, because if it didn't have air, you wouldn't be alive to notice. Of course, some people take that idea and turn it into something bigger. They say the universe seems fine-tuned for life, so someone must have tuned it. But that assumes life is the goal rather than just one of many possible outcomes. The universe isn't fine-tuned for life. Life is fine-tuned to the universe. We evolved under the conditions of this universe, so of course we fit it. It's like saying your feet are perfectly shaped for your shoes, but in reality the shoes were made around your feet. Life adapted to the universe, not the other way around. Here's another way to look at the question. Maybe the universe exists because it had to. Some physicists think that the laws of physics might inevitably lead to universes forming. There may even be an infinite number of universes, a multiverse, each with different physical laws. In that case, it's no surprise that we live in one of the rare ones where life can evolve. Again, we're here because we could be. That might sound speculative, but so is any claim about ultimate origins. Let's bring it down to something more relatable. Think about a simple question. Why are you here? You can answer it biologically because your parents had you. You can answer it historically because of a long chain of causes going back billions of years. Or you can answer it existentially to love, to explore, to make meaning. None of these answers are wrong. They're just different levels of explanation. Maybe the same is true for the universe. Maybe it has a scientific cause but also a philosophical space where we can ask what it means. The difference is that meaning comes from us, not from outside. Because ultimately humans create meaning. We look at a chaotic and different universe and draw maps of order. We write poetry about the stars. We invent stories to connect the dots. And that's beautiful, but it doesn't mean those stories are literally true. Just because a story gives comfort or structure doesn't make it the best explanation. Here's an analogy. Imagine walking into a library and seeing a book open on the table. It's filled with rich, complex text. Naturally, you might ask, who wrote this? But what if you were told that this book wasn't written by anyone? It was generated by a random process that printed symbols over billions of years, and eventually some sequences started to make sense. You might be skeptical, but the truth is, that's not far from how life emerged. Random mutations filtered by natural selection over immense spans of time led to complex beings like us who ask questions and write books. So maybe the universe is like that book, a product of blind processes that eventually created beings capable of asking about its origin. It might not have an author. It might just be. And while that might seem bleak to some, it's also empowering, because it means we're not here to serve a cosmic plan. We're free to make our own. That freedom is scary, but it's also honest. It means we have to take responsibility for how we treat each other, how we care for the planet, how we spend our short lives. There's no cosmic judge keeping score. The universe isn't watching us, but we are watching each other, and maybe that's enough. So why does the universe exist? Maybe it doesn't have a reason in the way we usually mean. Maybe it's a brute fact. Maybe it arose from quantum fluctuations. Maybe it's one of countless universes. Or maybe it just had to be this way. We don't know for sure and that's okay. Because not knowing is part of being human. It's what drives science, philosophy, and art. It's what makes curiosity such a powerful force. We may never have all the answers, but we can keep asking better questions. And maybe just maybe the value of the universe doesn't come from why it exists, but from the fact that we do and that we care enough to ask. And that is something truly meaningful. If you found this video thoughtful, subscribe for more content like this where logic matters more than faith.